everybody, this is Brian David Marshall coming to you from the Tournament Center at Magic Weekend Philadelphia. I'm here with a pretty happy Josh Hakakian. Thrilled. Uh, we're a couple rounds away from the end of day two. Uh, Josh is a couple rounds away from possibly making the top eight of this event. He is playing Splinter Twin in this brand new modern format. Yep. Tell us why you chose this deck. I chose this deck because uh, basically Jarvis Yu uh, messaged me on Facebook. He said, I should be playing a blue-red combo deck. I was like, yeah, I need you to be specific. He said, Splinter Twin is the best deck to play. Um, the more I talk with Jarvis, I talk with Alex Majelton, and basically, you know, the guidance was you want to end the game as early as possible, uh, turn four, turn five, something like that. With counter spell backup is the best way. You don't want to rely on a handful of cards like Pyromaster Ascension or random Storm decks. Um, and it basically, like, it lets you play removal spells main deck, something that Hive Mind doesn't really have room for, Pyromaster Ascension doesn't want to do. So it, it gives you consistency, it gives you power, um, the ability to interact with your opponent, and at the same time prevent them from interacting with you. It just gives you an awful, awful lot of play. So you're, you're only looking to have two specific cards in your hand at some critical point in the game, right? Like you're exactly. Like, if I have these two cards, and I can protect them with some assortment of the other cards in my hand, or some of I, them, I win. Exactly, yes. And some of them protect themselves. Like, you know, when they come into play, they'll tap something down, um, or they'll untap to give you reman men on your turn. Um, something like that, but yeah, basically. And you're, you're, you come at this deck from with some experience with it in the standard format. Yep, I never I never played the, the Splinter Twin combo in standard. Right. I felt like it was just too weak. I played Pyromancer Ascension with a Splinter Twin sideboard because, again, you got to play removal spells, uh, and you wanted to then. And then against any deck in the format, you can choose if you want to stay with Ascension, like against Callblade. Uh, you can stay with Ascension or against like um, Tempered Steel or Valakut. You can board in the Twin combo, and you get to cut like bad cards and just play like Flash Freeze and Spell Pierces and Dispels. And what, what's interesting is in Modern, you get to actually expand your combo greatly. Yep. You can have up to eight copies of Deceiver X Arc Pestermite. You can have up to eight copies of Splinter Twin Kiki Jiki if you want to. Yep. You you chose not to. I right? did choose not to. So let, let's let's look at the deck. The deck works in like basically four chunks, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Chunk number one is right here, the combo. Tell us how the combo works. Explain it to people who may not have played this deck. Well, basically when you have um, either Pestermite or Deceiver Exarch, uh, they come into play and you can choose to tap or untap a permanent. Uh, some of them have stipulations. We'll get into that in just a sec, but basically what ends up happening is once you have either a Splinter Twin or a Kiki Jiki um, and a Pestermite or Exarch, you can, you know, let's say for example, play Pestermite and then you get to perhaps on their end step tap down a land or tap down a creature that was going to kill and you in combat. It's kind of important that you flash it out. It, it can be certainly important to flash it out. Yes, even even in mid combat against Gadok Teague, if you have a Splinter Twin and multiple pieces, you may want to flash out a Pestermite, untap a land, flash out another Pestermite, block Gadok Teague um, with the Pestermite to kill it, untap and Splinter Twin, something like that. But you get to enchant Pestermite with Splinter Twin, perhaps. Uh, you'll tap Pestermite. It'll make a copy of itself. The copy. You can then choose to untap your initial Pestermite. You can do it over and over again, rinse, repeat, and you have an arbitrarily large number of Pestermites. Now, it's something that I did want to mention, and I just actually, it, it, it hasn't come up yet, but it certainly could, is that in standard, the Spellskite actually ended up wrecking um, the combo deck because with Splinter Twins and Exarchs, they can just steal your Splinter Twin with this card. But in modern, if you take a look at Exarch and you take a look at Kiki Jiki, even if they have a, um, a spell skite, because Kiki Jiki only targets a creature you control, and Deceiver Exarch only untaps a permanent you control, even if they have spell skite, these two cards still kill them. Something else to note is. So they, they, they can't fight this combo with spell skite? Not with these two cards, no. Correct. Yeah, this specific two card mm -hmm. combo. Fascinating. And something, something that's really nice about Kiki Jiki, and this is something that, uh, that also came up, is that. When you, if you're on your main phase with seven lands and you know your opponent has blanks, then you actually just get, just get to go um, main phase one of these two and then untap one of your lands and Kiki Jiki and then make all your guys hasty and win on the spot. So you don't actually have to like play a spell on their turn and then play a spell on your turn. You can just play them both on your turn and get in. That's awesome. So they, they might be thinking that they can tap out because you're not going to kill them on your turn. You're going to take a whole turn cycle to do it, which is what they used to from standard, but you're like, nope. You're just dead right now. Yeah, like if you're, you know, maybe maybe you're like draw step Vangelian click. Uh, you take a look at their hand, make sure it's safe, and then you make sure that you know all of your lands are tapped. You're not representing any danger. You just get to untap and win the game. All right, awesome. Well, let's talk about chunk number two of the deck, which okay. is the protection. Right. So these these are the cards that are all here. 
to protect your combo or to protect you from dying before your combo gets enacted, right? Right, right. Um, this, this is sort of a, an interesting scenario. I wasn't certain how many dispels to play. I knew I wanted to play a lot of spell pierces. Uh, the deck had Disrupting Shoal, and then um, I tested a little bit. I goldfished a lot, and Disrupting Shoal always seemed terrible. Spell Pierce has been the one of the best. I would say Spell Pierce is the second best card in the deck. I've been, I've countered Springleaf Drums. I've countered Path to Exiles. I've countered uh, Birthing Pods. I've countered basically everything you want with this card. Like everything that bothers you in any way, this card counters, except for maybe Gadok Teague. And, and especially when you get to tap one of their lands at the end of their turn, mm -hmm. giving them a very narrow mana window to deal with something, having one extra mana on your turn for Splinter Twin, I mean, for Spell Pierce can usually be a, a real difference maker, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, um, in, my, in my very last match, my opponent had three lands in play. So on his, in his upkeep, I tapped a land with Exarch. He beast within my Exarch. So I got to play another Exarch and then untap a land to keep up Spell Pierce because he was already tapped out into his draw set. So he drew a land, but on my turn I was able to play Kiki Jiki, also still with Spell Pierce backup, just because like you get to, I don't know, you, you get a discount once you purchase. Right. <laughs> so, uh, Remand, how, how has that been for you? Remand's nice. Um, it's, it's nice game one. It's, this format is so fast though. Remand comes out almost all the time on the draw. I don't think I keep it in against, maybe, maybe like the Cloud Post decks. But Remand almost always comes out. Um, it, oh, it always comes out against aggro, and it almost always comes out on the draw. And it's okay, it's a nice catch-all. The tempo isn't something you're really looking for. This could certainly be a hard counter, and there wouldn't be anything wrong with that. Uh, Boomerang, this is a card you said, yeah, maybe, maybe not the right pick for this format, or you were, a little, you were a little on the fence about this card. This card should be echoing truth. <laughs> um, I was concerned about something that you shouldn't be concerned about. Maybe Cloud Post, which is a very good matchup, but these should absolutely be Echoing Truth. Right, I, so you, so you, you kind of wanted that flexibility being able to target a land? I did initially, um, but the thing about Echoing Truth is if they have multiple anything, like multiple Damping Matrix, multiple Spell Skites, um, Torp Orbs, I guess, but the big thing is Empty the Warrens. There are people playing Empty the Warrens. I didn't expect that to happen. They should be Echoing Truth, and I have no excuse. <laughs> All right, for, fourth chunk is the lands. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we play an assortment of red blue, either sack lands or dual lands, some some mountains and some islands, one gemstone cavern. Have you uh, gotten any luck counters on the tournament so far? I haven't gotten any luck counters. I have gotten lucky uh, multiple times. Um, and every time I'm on the draw, I I just wait in BDM. I'm just waiting. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to be terrific. Uh, we also have Misty Rainforest. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about the sideboard real quick, and then we're going to let you go. Fight some, fight some players in Magic here. Uh, Vendillion Click? Vendillion Click is a card that uh, was not initially in the list, much like Spell Pierce. And Vendillion Click is probably the best card in the sideboard. I, I Maybe Slagstorm, but Vendillion Click has been terrific. Um, I've been, I mean, it, it kind of protects your combo, it gives you information, and it provides a very nice clock that they typically don't expect. I've killed multiple people with damage from V-Clicks. Slagstorm, I saw this card be fantastic for you in your previous round. Uh, Slagstorm's very, very good. Um, for some reason, people aren't expecting fire spout effects, but Slagstorm's just the best of it. Against Affinity yesterday, I, um, my opponent had the unfortunate choice of thought seizing away a lightning bolt or a Slagstorm, and he took the bolt for some reason, but the Slagstorm was going to his face anyway, so it really didn't matter. <laughs> uh, spell Pierce, Twisted Image, uh, Spell Snare, another Spell Skate, another Boomerang, which should also, I assume, be an Echoing Truth. Should be an Echoing Truth. One more Kiki Jiki. Mm -hmm. Uh, you said that that card's been uh, terrific for you. you. You knew someone was bringing in Teague, so you you went to Kiki Jiki so to get around that mm -hmm. uh, they're around that hate, and then one more bolt. Speaking of bolt, Josh has got to go. Got to go. He has got a bolt. Magic is about to start. We've got two rounds to go. Hopefully, we'll be seeing Josh again on Sunday. For Josh Hakakian, this is Brian David Marshall signing off from the tournament center.